Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. Now, chances are you've been scouring the internet for the past like 20-ish minutes and you are furious. There's a bunch of old, crusty videos, um, people you can't understand just trying to explain this whole key down, key press, whatever event, and you just want answers. So I am here to give them to you today. I have done that scouring myself. I hate it. I'm making a video today. I'm going to explain it all and hopefully it all makes sense and you guys can actually take away some learned experience from today's video. So without further ado, you know the drill. Go ahead, like, subscribe to my channel. You'll really help me out. And let's just get right into the video. All right, guys, what's up? Here we are. We have our Visual Studio open. We have a test project ready to go. Um, obviously, you're here because you want to understand how this whole key down stuff works. Um, to get to that point, let's first set up a simple interface. So let's just grab a few buttons. And we're then later on, we're going to assign them to a certain key on our keyboard. So I don't know. We could have like a giant button because this is super simple. I'm not going to make it too complicated. Um, let's just have two, you know, relatively large buttons and then a label. And this label is going to be used to update what we're doing um, with the button. So we have some sort of feedback as we're clicking them. So this one's just going to be called um, number label because I'm going to assign them to numbers and maybe some other things. But we're going to start with numbers. Um, let's make the font larger but first let's change the font so instead of label one let's say uh welcome with a smiley face and then um let's adjust auto size to false and then size it to be kind of equal with the buttons all right and if we're gonna be doing this let's have a little bit of fun so let's change this background color from that boring white to you know let's have a little bit of just a smidge of fun and make it i don't know orange uh that's terrible never mind let's uh <laughs> let's do green sure you know what we're just gonna deal with it so here's our green app that is totally beautiful and not terrible um we have our text set let's bump up the font a little bit just so it's easier to see for you guys at home um we're gonna do 36 and then we're gonna center it because that looks better so the text align property instead of top left let's do the middle middle so here we go we have a simple interface now let's adjust some properties of the buttons before we go into the back end code. So click on your first button here. Instead of button one, we're gonna be calling it numpad. So numpad button. And then um, here, the second button, we're gonna be calling this one uh, alphabet button. And I'll get to that later, but let's just call it that for now. And instead of the button one text, let's just say press me. And obviously we're not gonna be pressing with our mouse, but we will be clicking on the keyboard with our keys and stuff like that. So let's do that. Let's do press me again. Let's press me too. Okay, and then I think we're just about ready to go ahead and jump into the back end here. So number one, let's go ahead and click on this first button here and double click. That's going to automatically open up our back end here. Add a click method for that so that whenever you click it, this method will fire. Um, however, we're not really going to be using this too much. Uh, we will set up some simple stuff, but first, let's go ahead and go to, get to the other button. Double click on that one too. So now we have two methods for both buttons. So what we want to do is go ahead and update the label when we um, click our buttons on our keyboard or click the actual button. So let's go back and let's remember the name of our label here. So this is called number label. So we want to hop in this numbad button click method and we're going to say that the number label dot text is equal to um, numpad key pressed. And then the other thing we're going to say is number label dot text down here equals alpha key pressed. And let's not forget our semicolon. We can't forget that we're C sharp people. So we have that. We have those two things set up. Now here comes sort of the important details of how all this works. So if we go back to our form, Visual Studio operates on something called control focus. So if I was to launch this app right now, let's go ahead and do it. And my cursor is hovered over the press me, the first button here. Um, that means that I am focused on it and Visual Studio understands that. It knows that, hey, the cursor is in this general area, it's focused on this control. So if I were to just set up a method for just that button where um, when I press a key and I'm hovered over it, it'll go ahead and fire. However, I don't really like that. Um, I like just being able to click buttons at any time, um, no matter where my mouse is, right? 
if you're using a calculator on Windows, and let's open that up here. So like right here, I'm not necessarily hovered over anything, but I can press any key on my keyboard and it will go ahead and do it. If we don't have it set up like that, then I, when I hover over five, then I can click five. But if I'm not hovered over five, um, I can't. Like I can't click five on my keyboard and then it'll do it. Obviously Windows has it set up like this, but I'm just saying in terms of our project, we need to differentiate those two uh, different ideologies per se. We're gonna click on the whole form here and then we're gonna go over to the right where our properties are and we're gonna click on key preview. Now it's set to false by default, but if you read it, it says it determines whether keyboard events for controls on the form are registered with the form. And that's just kind of mumbo jumbo for what I just said. Um, you can read up about it more if you'd like on the Microsoft website. Um, that's just my understanding of it. And I could be wrong, but I'm just trying to teach you guys the way that I understand it. So key preview, we're gonna wanna set that to true. And then what we need to do is when we still have our form selected, go to the lightning symbol, and then we're gonna find the key down method here. So there's three different types of events. There's a key down, a key up, and a key press. And let me explain the difference. So key down is when we, you know, go ahead and click a key when it's first pressed. Um, the key up is when the key is released, so they're opposites of each other. And key press is when the control has focus. Remember that earlier when we were actually kind of like hovered over it and we're focused on that um, control and the user presses and releases a key. So that one's kind of like a weird combination of both. Uh, we're going to stick to key down though. Let's go ahead and just double click in key down and that's going to automatically create our form one key down method. So you want to notice something this key event args e e is the name of the events that are getting sent into this method so when visual studio or the, the windows app detects that you are pressing on the keyboard it's going to send key event arguments these right here and they're called e into this method and then we can access it so let's say we want to do something specific if uh the user pressed the number five on the number pad so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say if e dot, and then we have this key code method. So all the keys on your keyboard can be mapped to an ASCII character. Um, they all have their own unique code. And I'm going to be putting that um, chart down in the description below. You can read up on Microsoft's website about all the different codes and characters and stuff. But we're going to just say e dot key code. And then here's the nice part. You don't have to remember that code. I'm just simply explaining that just to explain it. Um, Visual Studio is nice enough that it knows them all and we can kind of just say what they are and it should be able to produce what we want. So what we're going to do is say e.keycode is equal to keys dot and then here's where we actually say what we want. So we're going to start with the num number pad 5. So we'll say num pad and then we'll find here we have all the numbers and we're going to just do 5. So when the user does click the number five on the numpad, what do we want to do? We're just going to say basically the same thing here. We can either say this directly or we can be clever and just reference that other buttons uh, method. So we could say numpad button dot perform click. And what that's going to do is when we press the number five, it's going to fire this, which fires this and then updates the label. And this is nice if you want to make like a calculator app. Um, you, you, you're going to have a method for every single button, like one, two, three, and then you can just kind of call that method from within uh, this area down here. But let's go ahead and launch our app and see what happens. So here I am. I have my app open. Let me press the number five. You notice it instantly updates the label, which is awesome. And I can press other keys and, you know, nothing really happens. That's just one of the things we can do. Um, if you want to reference the numbers on the top bar of the keyboard, maybe you don't have a number pad. What you're going to say is instead of keys.numpad5, you're going to do capital D and then the number you want. So those are mapped to like D5 over here. So now if I press start again and go ahead and press the number 5 up on the left side of my keyboard, it does the same thing that we saw before. All right, now let me introduce some more complications. Um, the key down events doesn't really cover everything, which is surprising. I would have thought it would cover something like enter. I was making an app. I clicked enter and it never seemed to work, even though we already disabled that key preview method from earlier. Um, the whole meth, uh, the whole focus thing wasn't even in my mind. And it turns out that the enter key can only, 
or it only fires when it has the focus and even if it does have the focus which shouldn't be a problem in our case um, it fires a key up or a click event so the key up event is fired and we're only addressing key down right now so what do we want to do we want to go ahead and go back to our form click on the whole thing we want to add a key up method and this is where we can address something like enter so now we could say if e.keycode is equal to keys.enter and then go ahead and do the same thing as before. So we can go ahead and just say alpha key press instead. And now when we go ahead and click start, if I press the enter key like this, it will now say that the alpha key was pressed, which is awesome. Now guys, I'm no expert on this subject by any means and I could have been wrong part of this video, but hopefully that gets you to where you need to be and definitely a better overall understanding of it than the other videos on YouTube. Um, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer them um, and we can learn this together. So hopefully you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.